Welcome to our name, image, likeness workshop. I'm Pat Curran, one of the co-founders here. Tim Curran on as well. I don't know if he's below, I guess, wherever you're looking. It's I'm like, below on yours. I don't know where yeah, I'm You are. So, all right. So what we'll do today, we're starting right now. We'll we'll talk name, image, likeness. We'll talk about our experiences so far in a year of us working in it, both on the from the athlete side, from the brand side, how to build strategy, all that stuff. Next hour, so our time, we're in LA. Next hour at 9 a.m., noon Eastern time, we'll have Mick from Icon Source. I do have uh, Corona, so I will be. Yeah, calling. I was going to say, you might have to pray. You might have to start this off. I say, <laughs> I've been sick last yeah. couple days. No, I, I tested positive yesterday. So anyway, I have that. So I'll be, yeah, I'll be battling that throughout the day with voice probably. But so next hour, we'll have Mick. We will recap the past year. Uh, if you're not familiar with Icon Source, it's a, it's a marketplace. We've done multiple deals with our athletes on there. It's a good resource that I think every athlete should be a part of, but he will talk about not just Icon Source. It's not a sales pitch, but marketplaces in general, what they've seen to help athletes succeed, uh, what they've seen in the past year to help them succeed moving forward in the year from there. And then third hour, it's Tim and I back, ask us questions. We want to bring people up to comment to ask us something if they'd like, or you can almost also just throw in the chat box. But how we'll go is each of these will be about 45 minutes, 30 to 45, somewhere in that range. We'll take a break. We'll be on the same link and we will come right back to where we are. So without further ado, I'm going to start. Uh, the first part of this is, is mostly me. I should say all me. And then Tim will jump on and he'll talk more of the brand side. So uh, let's do it. All right, who are we and why the hell are we the ones here on Sports Biz Network talking about this stuff? So we're former D1 players. I was a, actually both of us played at Bowling Green, small, smaller G5 school, but both played Division I football. I went on to coach some D2, D3. I coached at Ashton University, Oakland College, and worked in two different athletic departments. I worked at Bowling Green. I worked at UCF. So when it comes to this, all, all the different aspects of this NIL thing, I think we grasp this pretty well. Uh, myself, obviously, again, the co-founder here with my brother, Tim, uh, before we got onto the athlete side five, six years ago, what we were doing is working with big media companies. So we worked with like USA Today, CBS Sports, Max Preps, World MMA Awards, and the UFC on marketing and branding. And we saw so many missed opportunities from athletes and their agencies. So we shifted to work with athletes specifically around NIL type stuff. Now, obviously, we're talking pros only at the time, but fast forward to this past year, and now we do work with pros. We work with seven pros and we work with about 30 college athletes. And, and our focus is mostly on football and basketball. We have worked with some other athletes in other sports, but that's kind of our, our focus is uh, football. And then we have many more women's basketball versus men's, but football and basketball. In this past year, it's crazy. It's only been about a year. feels like it's been forever now. But in the past year, we've worked, like it says here, with over 30 athletes, help generate over seven figures, which is a million dollars for those counting at home and grown seven figures as well. And I think that's a, a super important part of this is not just make dollars today, but build business behind this. <clears throat> and humbly, nobody I think is putting out more or better NIL content than myself personally. Every damn day, except for the last couple with this COVID-ish, uh, I put out stuff, tips, ideas, thoughts, some of that we'll go over here today. Some of it we'll go over more in depth today, but I will put up my info here if you aren't already following me. And I every day I'm trying to add value to you as an athlete to help get better and build your business. So what the hell is name, image, likeness? I always ask this. I, I just did a presentation in Florida State last week. Uh, that, that's always one of my first things I ask, though, is what is it to you? And, you know, everyone says, making money or building your brand. And I, I think it, obviously it is those things, right? But it's opportunity. It means that you as an athlete are now a business. And I think that should entail a mindset shift like right now, because uh, <laughs> a year ago, you were just some punk ass teenager or some 22 year old even uh, who liked to post on social because they wanted to share their fits or they had a great play or whatever. But now all of this can turn into business opportunities. So I think that mindset shift happens or can happen and totally change your biz. All right, what are the opportunities out there? Obviously social, and that's the biggest thing. What we've seen with our athletes is, 
I don't know the true percentage, but it's got to be like 98% of what we've done is somehow affiliated with social media. And that could be like, hey, I'm going to do an appearance. That's on social. I'm selling merch. That's on social. Collabs like we've done with Snickers or WWE or companies like that. They're watching, wanting to you promote, wanting you to promote it on social. So everything basically ties back to that. Uh, I think it's important to obviously have authentic collabs. We've seen many non-authentic collabs throughout this NIL past year, and we see them right away, and we probably scroll on by, and they don't get numbers, and it hurts their potential long-term collabs with either those companies or other companies. So we we try to focus with our athletes. Obviously, do things that that mean something to you. Uh, obviously through social channels, through YouTube, through, Twi through Twitch. Uh, if you can get into either the uh, IG reels, you can get paid on now too. You can, through TikTok, you can get paid on there now too. And that's obviously view-based. Uh, appearances, autographs, membership programs, um, that, you know, as simple, we got hit up the other day by OnlyFans. It, it's not all sexual stuff, but it's membership program, people being a part of what you're doing. I know OnlyFans has a negative connotation, but we've done that with one of our other athletes, Deshaun Hyler. He has the Hooper Zone where people get access to his knowledge base as an athlete. They can do his drills. They can be a part of live combos. Uh, and, and those are things I think more and more athletes could and should be doing. And we've now seen collectives start where athlete driven collectives where fans can pay to have access to athletes, which I think is really damn cool too. And there'll be more, we'll see more and more of that stuff as we go here uh, over the next six, six months to a year. Cause I think those are super valuable to a fan, super valuable to an athlete to be a part of. And it just kind of makes sense. Merch. And then obviously camps and clinics. And those are, you know, those are the top ones. There's, there's lots more as well. What is your brand? Your brand, this is the thing that probably drives me the most nuts around NIL is, is especially at the beginning is like, I dropped my brand and it's like some logo and it's like PC2 or something. And it's like, that that's cool, but that is not what your brand is. Your brand is what you are known for. Uh, that logo can be a part of that, but your brand is what you're known for on social, what it's known for, what you're known for on the quarter field. <laughs> that's what you're known in the classroom. Like you're, your brand to your professor is different than your brand to me who follows you on TikTok. Uh, it's it's the people that you, it's what you're known for in the grocery store. If you happen there, it's all of that, the community stuff, everything. Uh, I think it's important to start thinking about what you are known for and what you want to be known for. Those could be totally different things. And you can start to create that brand on your own. Like just because, uh, you know, like like Michael Jordan, his brand, whatever, whatever you thought he was based on what media told you, he was probably something very different in, in real life. And, and that was closely curated. If you watched the whole documentary on him, like everything they did was curated to have this brand and this perception of him, right? Where you peel back the layers and it's different. So you can create this brand and what you're known for. Uh, don't feel like because you're known for one thing today doesn't mean that can that can't totally change here starting next week. Uh, what are the things you do outside of your sport? Uh, that could be, you could be an artist. You could be, <clears throat> uh, you do clothing design. You are a gamer. Like what are those things and how can you build around that? I think that's important to think about um, not only for now, but then what do you want to be doing in five years, 10 years, uh, if you're not playing your sport, which most of you are not going to be playing your sport. And those are the things that you're passionate about, that you want to be a part of, that you can start to build this audience and this brand around today to help build long-term. And then who's the market for that? How can you monetize this? Uh, if all of your, if your following today has nothing to do with gaming, it's all just people that you know, or people that follow you because you're a softball player or whatever. Uh, if you want your market to be a bunch of people who follow you in gaming, well, you, if you're not posting any gaming content, they're probably not going to be that today. So start to build that audience through the stuff that you're putting out on social and be authentic to you, right? Like I said earlier, I talked about ads specifically, but we see through, if it ain't you, we see it and it's awkward. And especially you 18 and 22 year olds, you guys grew up on social. As soon as you see something cringe, you're like, goodbye. You see it, you know it right off the jump. All right. Community building. I think <laughs> obviously this is, uh, I, I think this is the most underrated thing about social media in general, but specifically around NAL, everyone wants to just have, have a check handed to them and, and shit we do too, right? People, uh, we don't hate money, but to cultivate this community is what helps bring that money in uh, and build long-term, right? Social is the, 
this damn phone is the best business tool. That's why you guys are on here right now is you either saw this through one of our social media posts, or my personal ones, and that's why you sat down right here and you're listening to us. And this is the type of thing you can build on your own too. Uh, obviously, through TikTok, through IG, through Snapchat, YouTube, whatever you, you're building, that this phone that we have on our on on us at all damn times is an opportunity for us to build business. Again, you see this is the third time now, be authentic to you, uh, to your community. If you're building this gaming community or you're building a community of people that give a damn about what you're cooking and whatever your thing is, or they just care about your soccer drills, right? Be authentic to you, build those things, uh, build the content around you and how you actually speak and how you talk, and then put out good quality stuff for them. Uh, it's it it's more than just getting an audience. It's about getting people actually invested in you, the person. Uh, I say creating pillars, which basically means like put out different types of content. Uh, so it, in for one of our athletes, for instance, like uh, they they might do home or fun. They might do basketball and they might do gaming. Like those are the three types of things that they're consistently posting about. And it also kind of takes away one, it shows here, here's the person, not just the hooper, uh, but it also takes away less of like, all right, what do I need to post? Or what am I going to do? Well, now they've kind of got their, their buckets. They need to throw the content in. Uh, and then some basic social hacks we'll, we'll talk about as we go. Uh, little things when I talk about community building specifically though, is like respond to comments on your, your posts or respond to comments in your DMs. Like those, those people that are commenting, yeah, a lot of them are, are your friends, but those people that are commenting are people that would be in, interested in being a part of what you're doing. <clears throat> Excuse me, being a part of what you're doing. Uh, when you drop merch, they're going to buy it. When you say, go shop at this place, they're going to go use this code. They're going to use the code. Like those little things that comment back can really start to not only help you build this relationship with that person, but also helps to hack social. The more and more engagements, the more comments, the more likes that you're getting from the same person back and forth, the more that person is going to be getting your content in their feed or on their IG story or in their TikTok for you page. All right, grow the biz of you. <clears throat> These are, this is from obviously from Jets Camp. And this is something where it's like easy ass content stuff that people eat up. Does pineapple belong on pizza, right? There's a gazillion questions that you could ask. There's the who do not let you date your son or daughter. There's like all those things we've seen on TikTok and, and IG. And I think what, what these do, and, and this is different than I would set it up as a, as a personal page. Like if I did it myself as an athlete in the locker room, I wouldn't just have it set up. I would ask this player the question. I'd ask another player, another teammate, the question. Uh, <clears throat> but these are great ways to collab with teammates, the great way to show personality, and they're always entertaining and people stick around and watch. So when I talk about Grow the Biz of You, it's, it's about being intentional. I talk about collabs with teammates there. Uh, in, consume less, create more. So all of us are probably going to spend at least an hour on social media today. And I always say this, instead of spending an hour on other people's BS, spend five to 15 minutes on your own. So put together this video that's been in your drafts for 10 days or put together an IG story poll or put together an IG story quiz or put together reels based off something like this, right? So not just waste time on other people's stuff, which, you know, hey, we all like entertainment, right? But be intentional around the business of you. Uh, I say this, you got a full creative team behind you. Most schools do. So most places you're at, you're going to have somebody at least, maybe not a full team, but most places have somebody behind you that is also helping you create content. So you've got photos and videos from, from the workout the other day. Uh, and once you're in season, you've got content, right? Use that, do your own thing and combine it to put out a good brand holistically around who you are. Video, man, if you're not doing video, you're, you're messing up in today's, in 2022, you have to be doing video, period. There is, I, I saw a meme yesterday and it was like something around like the CEO of Instagram is telling you to do two video and you're still not doing it, but it was obviously way funny. I wish I could pull it up if right now. I did not have it uh, for this specific presentation, but you gotta be doing video. 
it's uh, TikTok has blown up since 2020. And now IG is competing like hell to be on that level with TikTok. So that's why you're getting all these IG reels in your feed. That's why when you put out a reels, they're putting it in more people's feeds and you're getting more views and you're getting more likes on it. Uh, <clears throat> you have to be doing it. Not, not that you can't post photos ever, but if you want more numbers on them, which is like the main, th when I get hit up by people in my, my DMs, it's like, Hey, I want more NIL deals or Hey, I want to grow. Well, shit, this IG is telling you how to grow, put together a reels. And that can be as simple as a workout. That can be as simple as, you know, you hang out with friends, uh, uh to go to a concert this weekend. And it could be the get, uh, get G R W M means get ready with me, uh, for all you not youngins on here. But it could be as simple as the get ready with me or the actual concert. And it's like five, five second videos from it doesn't need to be the most highly produced video for it to perform well. And I think less, less about the aesthetic and more about the performance, just like an athlete. Like, it's great if you look physically good, but if you can't perform on the quarter field, uh, what do you what's what's the end goal? You want to be able to perform. Right. So if you're not performing well on the quarter field like what the hell are you doing and that's the same thing with ig reels now is like you can have a great looking aesthetic with your grid but but shit if you're not getting numbers on it it's not good for your biz so and again here's some examples day in the life get ready with me uh, one of our guys carson did a video on here's what i eat in a day is at ohio state as a football player and it was like i think he had at the time maybe nine thousand followers on tiktok video got hundreds of thousands of views. I saw, I've seen multiple other people now do that and do very well. There's so many things that you don't even think about that people want to see. It could be the, what I eat in a day. Uh, he did a locker room tour at Ohio state. Here's five things I learned at Ohio state. And, you know, he's, he's done, I think six or seven videos now over the past five weeks and went from like 3000 followers to 15,000 like that because he's putting out content that people want to see. Uh, so long story short, you got to be making video. So even if you just get photos from that workout you're doing tomorrow, put it together in a video. I guarantee you it's going to perform better. Protect your brand at all costs. So, you know, part of this is patience. When NIL opened up and we saw everyone do that yoke gaming thing. And I remember talking to two SEC quarterbacks, I'm sorry, one SEC quarterback and, and an ACC quarterback. And one of them told me they made like 40 bucks for it. And another one told me hundred bucks to post on their actual feed. Uh, the picture of yoke, the text with the blue and the, and actually I talked to another athlete who didn't even know what they were getting paid for it. Like did not know. And this person actually ended up being a top 15 NFL draft pick. And so, you know, <clears throat> that was a lot of people have learned since then, but you know, protect your brand. Don't just do things to do things, have patience, Understand a single brand collab can hurt or help a lot. If it's like I said, I mentioned the non-authentic stuff. Well, let's say I do a brand collab with Pat's Water here, and I post about it, and I get, you know, I don't know, 150 views on it. Well, that brand, Pat's brand, Pat's Water, is going to look at me and be like, "Well, shit, that didn't perform well." There's a reason it didn't perform well. Maybe, maybe his audience is not our audience. Maybe we shouldn't work with this person. So. That could hurt me in that sense. Then also Tim's headphones company looks at me and they, they're they like, well, shit, let's, I want to potentially work with Pat. Let me see what he's done. Some other brand collabs. They're going to, you know, the first thing they do is go look at your IG and TikTok and they'll, they'll see this one. They'll say, man, I only got a hundred views. And most of his videos are getting two to 3000 views. That's not good. Maybe his audience working with brands doesn't resonate with them. So then maybe they don't want to work with me. And then also keep in mind, like maybe Tim's water wants to potentially work with me, but then they go on, they say I'm working with pass water. So those, those are three different instances where it could hurt, or obviously there's, there's ways that helps if it performs well too. So keep in mind, every brand collab you do has an effect on long-term biz. So it's not just that one. I know you got the check for the thing that you did one time, but how can you then turn that into more business long-term? And then be careful what you're signing. Here's two things I had seen. Uh, I do not know Chris Steele. I don't know if he knew that he was going to be a part of this ad or not. But if if they're paying to promote this, you should know that and you should be compensated for that. It's not just, hey, you're part of this, uh, this company. But if they're adding numbers like this and extra eyeballs, that's something you should have in an agreement.
Uh, and this is a different agreement that I was sent. Uh, it, this guy's a top 50 player going into last season, a top 50 recruit, I should say, going into last season. And a friend had sent me this agreement, basically saying that if if this athlete creates things during the time of our agreement, and and, and by the way, this was for free T-shirts, like he wasn't even being paid, free T-shirts. But if if he created things while <clears throat> like concepts, ideas, designs, suggestions like if those things happened they own them which is complete bullshit that there's no but there should be none of this in an agreement around something like this and the athlete would have signed it had he not had someone to lean on that other person who was like yo this looks shady what do you think and then obviously send it to us but be careful of what you do uh obviously don't do dumb stuff i mean you, that's that's the one thing i think schools always harp on is like, don't do dumb things. Don't feel like this too. I know I've heard of two people in the last two weeks I've talked to who have been suspended. This has nothing to do with NIL, but been, been suspended because of things they did on what they thought were private social media accounts. So one was on a private Snapchat that a teammate saw. And another one was on a friends only uh, TikTok post that again, another teammate saw. So be careful of what you do. People see it. Uh, if it's something that you don't want public to see, don't put it on a Snapchat or TikTok or friends only on your IG story either. The little things. All right. So <clears throat> this is a, a what I think is a solid ad on the left where we actually see tie versus what is not a good ad on the right. Now, numbers wise, <coughs> Uh, he'd actually turn off comments on the one on the right, but I'd seen it before he did that. And there was like a hundred likes on the left. There was something like 1500 likes. So you see the basic difference. If we see you in an ad, it's going to perform better period. And it's as simple in this case as actually just holding it in his hand versus against uh, flowers. Same thing with videos. We need to see you on cover photos. And I'll talk about that here in the next slide. Excuse me, but we have to see you in ads. If, how Instagram works, if we're scrolling through and we don't see you, we're going right past it. We don't stop to see the tie or see mine, Pat, current media. We don't see the actual handle, typically. We stop because we see our person that we follow in the post. Then we'll go in, we might be like, oh, what's he talking about? Or what's he selling here? Also on top of this is in, in the right where it's just the balm and the flower, what they're actually promoting is a really, really cool buddy camp for special needs kids. And so, unfortunately, not a lot of people would see this through the social media post. Uh, if he did, it could be as simple, too, as like a, a video just talking about it. He could have pulled up his phone, talked for 15 seconds and been like, hey, super excited about this collab with Bomb Shot. We have on the was it, August 28th. We'll be hosting the buddy boot camp at Kim Kimwanis Park. Like as simple as that, and would have performed 10 times better. It probably would have been picked up by local media. It probably would have led to a bunch more and a bunch of these special needs kids finding out about it or special needs parents finding out about it to have their kids come and be a part of this too. So again, to reiterate, we need to see you in everything you do on your feed. Uh, actually, next slide would be the cover photo one. Here's just another little things. One, uh, Chase, now in the NFL, but this was when he was at Arizona State. This is a photo of a billboard. As you might imagine, this did not perform well. And, and you know, we're talking about <clears throat> a realtor. Like, for me, what I would have done here in this case is, is gone in and probably gone to a house that Brandon had sold or shown numbers. Brandon usually sells for, I don't know, 150 percent above asking price or whatever. Like I know there's crazy numbers right now. So I would have helped him sell this, helped, I should say, helped sell him and not post something like this. Because in this case, how many people called? Probably not a whole lot. I know a lot of people didn't see it. It, it performed very poorly. It got less than uh, like 10% of what his normal likes get. And so people just didn't stop to even see it. Whereas if he'd have done some cool stuff, they pro he probably would have been super excited. He probably would want to do more. Maybe it ends up turning into a house or like, you never, you never know where this stuff can go. But if you just post something like this, it is not going to do well. All right, here's, here's cover photos and the importance of that. Now, again, if you're posting a video, you got to be posting on reels. I don't know. I don't know an instance 
outside of it being longer than 90 seconds on why it would make sense to do that. But if it's under 90 seconds, you got to be posting on reels. That's part one. Uh, <clears throat> part two is cover photos. So this is Derrick Henry, one of the best running backs in the league. Uh, he is not immune to a poorly performing video. So these are just screenshots of, of a recent post he had done on videos. So you see the ones he's in down here. You can see my mouse, Tim. Right. Cool. Uh, 510,000. We see him 500,000. We see him again. Those are, those are Heisman commercials. Those are good video. So it's not like everything, but you see like the 158 one. This was a cool video. It's a hype video. These are clearly ads and that's why he has them up front and you know, 77 K on, on a video performance with FedEx. Like they, they will not be happy about that. There's two reasons why brands want to work with athletes. One is alignment. Like, Hey, we work with Derrick Henry and two is eyeballs. Hey, you know, we got 510,000 views or we got 77,000 views. So if they, depending on what they're looking for, sometimes their sole focus is that alignment. Like, Hey, we work with this person. Sometimes the sole focus is just eyeballs. They don't care if it was, if I got them 510,000 views or 550,000 views. So I got them more, like maybe they'd want to work with me. So always keep that in mind. Like this stuff does matter. And this affects like some people will say like Derek Henry doesn't give a shit about that. Maybe he doesn't, but if it affects his bottom line, he's obviously doing these ads. Like, I don't know what he makes with Dr. Teals. I'm sure it's not a $10 million deal. It's probably in the tens of thousands, I ha I'd have to imagine. So he's doing the things anyway. So why not make it perform better so he can do these things more or charge more and help continue to build the business of, of himself off the field? Uh, spend five minutes to comment back. This, this is one of those social hacks I talked about earlier. The more, <clears throat> the more likes, comments, and shares your video, your posts in general, but videos obviously in this case, get the more they're going to be put in other people's feeds. So if you're commenting back, spending five minutes, you're going to one, you know, add more comments to it, but you're going to continue to ping the algorithm to, to say like, Hey, there's interaction going on between like Pat and Derek Henry. So uh, the comment that I made, and then he comments back and then I comment back to him. I'm more likely now to see his next post than I would be if I had not done any of those things. Representation. That's a question I get a lot as well is like, how do I find somebody or can I work with you or whatever? And, and, you know, for us, again, we work with about 30 college athletes. We have a couple more in the works, but we're not, we can't take on five more or 10 more for sure. So a lot of times I'll say like, Hey, if you've got questions, let me know, but here's kind of how we lay ours out. So, so you guys know, and this is what we think is fair. So percentage wise, we take 15% of what our athletes make. That's one five percent. It should be somewhere between ten and twenty. If it's higher than that, be be very careful. I talked to an athlete two weeks ago who told me an agent was was trying to get thirty five percent of them. Luckily, uh, his parent I think knew better than that, and so they did not sign with that uh, that agent. But I've heard forty. I've heard fifty. That is super slimy. You should not be a part of anything like that. Again, it shouldn't be more than twenty percent. Uh, I do think uh, I've had this question too. Like, do I need somebody or why do I need somebody? I do think it's important if you've got somebody who's knowledgeable to, to help, help you navigate this stuff for our athletes. We not only do we do reach out to, to brands, but if brands reach out, we help with negotiating. We help with looking over agreements. We help with, um, getting more money nine times out of 10 to, uh, longer agreements, all those things. So I do think it's important to have, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of you probably have, not done anything, uh, at least when before you started, you've not done anything on social media and also don't have anybody in your family who's done something. So to have somebody who's at least knowledgeable around what an agreement should look like, so you don't get caught up in those those bad things that I said, I was talking about a few minutes ago, um, but also help you navigate things, I think it's important to have. And if you have contracts sent to you and you need help, feel free to reach out, send me a DM on IG. Here's what I'm, here's what was sent. What do you think? Is this cool? Is this not cool? Like I will give you, a, I'm not going to spend 10 hours on it, but I'll give you an answer to, to hopefully help you navigate these things. And, and same thing, if you have somebody, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> if you have a, an agent trying to reach out to you, like if you've got questions about what they're sending you, like feel free to reach me out, reach out to me. <clears throat> I'm making it through most of this. It's without uh, the throat going. I was going to say, you, you just made it pretty solid with uh uh not falling apart there i'm sounding good until by now 
Yeah, I'm starting to feel a little bit in that throat, but, but that's good because I'm almost done here. So this is Tim's part here. Tim that's on our end. Yeah. So how we how we navigate this is I'm much more on the creative side and the athlete day to day. Tim is much more on the brand side, creative there and day to day on brand combos and helping our athletes navigate this. So my my first part of this is done. If there's any questions, you can always shoot them in the box here. Uh, we'll also obviously, like I said earlier, we'll be back here in about an hour and a half specifically around questions. So if you want to hold to then, you want to come up on the uh, the virtual stage here, we can do that too. But I will shut up and throw it your way, Tim. I guess I, since it's pulled up on my end, just let me know when you want me to go to the next page. Yeah, I'll just, I'll give you the thumbs up here. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of these things that I'm going to talk about is stuff that you've highlighted as well. So, um, you know, being authentic is probably going to be our first one we go over. So, you know, identifying brands. So this is all about like, I do the business side and I'm talking to brands all day, every day. So I know exactly what they've been asking us for. I know exactly what they're looking for. I know that we, what we've done and what, what has worked. So um, these next few slides is all brand specific. So Pat had mentioned, you know, people reach out to him for um, how to grow on social media and how to get brand deals. So his first part was basically how to grow on social media. This next part is uh, how to get brand deals, right? Um, so identify brands that you like and use, right? So being authentic, that's all that means is um, if a brand is going to do a deal with you, the first thing that they're going to say is, do you like the, this brand or do you use this product or service? Um, and if not, they're going to send it to you and then you're going to try it. And if you don't like it, nobody wants that relationship. And if you do like it, then they're going to ex explore that next step, which is going to be negotiating what that looks like. So price, length of term, what the deliverables are, all that type of stuff. So again, identify a brand, brands that you like and use. What we usually do on our end is we have our athletes put together a list. It could be, you know, the more, the, the more, the better, but it could be global brands. It could be local brands. Um, and all we want to do is get an idea of who you like and what you use. And then we can go out and reach out to those brands. Or if we already work with them, then we just contact them and say, Hey, we have a new athlete on our roster and we want to explore something here. So uh, first thing is being authentic. Second thing, DMs and emails, uh, these both work when you're reaching out to brands. So the probably the hardest part for people is this actual sales part. Um, and I've been doing it for years, so I'm, I'm fairly decent at it. Um, and, and I found both emails and DMs do work. However, I would say emails work better to get directly to where you need to go. DMs are more of a an intro. So for example, if I'm going to DM a brand and, and you're probably not going to DM like a Gatorade, it's going to be a different brand, a smaller brand, you DM them and um, you basically are asking for the right person to connect with, right? Um, emails, you can do a lot of research. You can figure out who you need to reach out to. Generally speaking, it's going to be someone in the marketing department, just depends on the size of the, the company and the different roles that people have, but usually director of marketing handles something like this. Um, and then the third point here is be relentless. So don't just reach out once, reach out a second time, reach out a third time, reach out a fourth time. If you really like the brand and you think there's a very authentic fit, keep reaching out until you get an answer. Uh, and that could be, you know, send a DM this week, send an email the next week, follow up with a DM the next week, follow up with an email the next week. So just keep responding and, um, and just be relentless. Because uh, at the end of the day, you have to think about if you've got a thousand athletes and they're all DMing one brand, how are you going to stand out? It's what you say in it. And it's, if they keep seeing your name over and over and over and like, Oh, okay, let me, let me finally open up this and respond. Um, and then here's an example here that I just put at the bottom. Um, and the ideal situation here, and this is more of like a DM is you want to be specific. You don't want it to sound like it's spam. You don't want to sound like you're just DMing every brand in the country just to get a deal. You want to be authentic and specific in the DM or uh, and or the email. So this is just saying, hey, brand, um, and this could be local or global. Again, I play at whatever school it is. So highlight the school because that might be super interesting, especially if it's local. If you're like local to the Syracuse area, you're definitely going to highlight that and you're going to be like, okay, uh, I, I definitely want to align myself with athletes at that school, right? So um, highlight the school, highlight the brand as well, because you want them to know that you're actually doing the research and you're actually, this isn't a spam thing. Um, and I love your store. I love your restaurant. I love your products, whatever it is. Um, you know, I love the sandwich. I love the smoothie. I love the new kicks that you guys have in your store. Um, and I'm there once a week, you know, something like that, something very specific. I come there every Monday, um, you know, whatever it is that, that makes it specific to you. Um, and again, this is a DM. So you just want to find the right person to connect with. So I'd love to find a way to drive traffic to your stores and provide value to your brand. What's the best way to connect? So 
ideal in an ideal situation, they say, Hey, here's the person you need. Here's the email address. Here's their phone number. Call them. Um, sometimes the person is actually running their social media. So they say, Hey, it's, you know, it's Dave reach out to me tomorrow at noon and give me a call, that type of thing. Uh, but you want to don't come at them. I see this all the time. Don't come at them with saying, Hey, uh, I want a sponsorship or how can, how can you sponsor me or something like that? You want to provide value to the brand. You provide value to the brand. They pay you uh, in return for that value. Pat, you go ahead if you're right there. I see the cursor moving. Cool. So what do brands look for? Again, going back to the authentic. That's the most important thing here is being authentic. Uh, they don't want you to endorse a product that you don't like, right? So like I said before, they're going to send you the product if you don't, if you haven't tried the product yet. Uh, we've had that all the time. It delays the process uh, because they have to send the product. You have to try the product. You have to use the product. And then you have to say, hey, I like it. Now we're you know two weeks into this process, but you need to be authentic. Every brand that we've worked with uh, has, has to be authentic. Uh, another thing they look for is your followers. So unfortunately, that's it is important, uh, right? Because like Pat said before, is like they want to align with you or they want eyeballs. So the more followers you have, the better chance of them getting eyeballs and reaching their numbers on their end, right? Uh, personality, going back to what Pat said earlier too, again, because a lot of these, the growth and the sponsorships, the endorsement, the partnerships, they align. Um, the personality and Pat, I believe it said like, show you show what you do outside the sport. So he mentioned like gaming or fashion or whatever it might be. I know that a lot of the brands, that's what they look for because everyone's posting, you know, in-game footage, them in their outfits, training videos, everybody, every athlete has those different verticals. They want to see what you like, what your personality is, because um, then you can build off that, right? Um, and so that, I know that one of our athletes had, uh, the brand really liked them up front, but they, all they did was post pictures in their uniforms or um, in-game videos. And they're like, we, uh, we, as a lifestyle brand can't align with that because it, he's showing no personality, he's showing nothing off the field. And so he said, here's the, here's the plan. Let's create a runway, show personality, grow that way. And then we will endorse this athlete. Um, and then region is another big key. Um, it's not all in all cases, but from a brand perspective, you have to look at it like they want to target for specific campaigns, different areas in a lot of cases. So sometimes they do a blanket um, campaign. So all across the country, sometimes they're like, Hey, we just want to focus on coastal States. Uh, so like California, Florida, New York, some of the bigger markets, sometimes they don't want to, sometimes they're just saying, Hey, we want to be in the South. So anywhere from, you know, Tennessee down to Texas and, and over to Florida. So sometimes it's unfortunate that, um, it's like that, but, you know, think about it this way of like, um, you know, grocery stores, they're regional. Um, if a grocery store is in Florida and they're not in Washington, they're not going to pay an athlete in Washington to endorse their, their store because you can't even go into their store. Um, so that's just another part of the, what brands are looking for. And from our perspective, I know there's other data and other people out there, but roughly about 65 to 70% of brands are, I'm having more of those conversations around TikTok than IG, um, and about 30, 35 in the IG world. Not to say that you know, if you're doing a TikTok, a lot of times they just want you to, to, to repurpose that as an IG Reels. Um, and you want it kind of both, but I would say they're leaning more towards TikTok these days and whether it's testing uh, or they actually have the data and they're jumping into TikTok because it's working. I don't know. You have to talk to each individual brand for that, but they are focused on TikTok. Um, so I, I definitely highlight and recommend going TikTok all day. And I would add to that too. A lot of times you'll see national brands will do TikTok. Uh, where IG is going to be more of your local stuff and and national, but there's obviously a difference between not a whole lot of local stuff on TikTok. Correct. Yeah, that's a good point too. Is and, and to clarify that is like the national like brands have two perspectives and what they're looking for overall branding, and then they have direct ROI, return on investment. So and IG does a very good job of that, where you can click right through. You have you can highlight things. You the metrics are there, and the direct ROI. So that meaning. Somebody clicks on the link that you posted, they can track that, see how many sales, what the cost was and how much they paid you and what the return on investment was for you specifically. An overall branding uh, campaign that again, it's national, it's global. They just want eyeballs, as many eyeballs as they can with their product or whatever that is, as part of the campaign. Go yep. Ahead, and then again, like the local, like Joe's pizza shop down the street and I asked you to do TikTok. They want you to do stuff on IG. Right, right. Yeah, I would say 
if you are like any local uh, company or store to your campus, I think a, a, a DM through Instagram is probably the best route, to be honest with you. And going back to like Pat's, what Pat said earlier too, is like, you know, basically the opportunities are limitless now. You are not just looking for brand deals. You can create businesses, right? You're a professional athlete. Other than the fact that your school can't pay you, you can get paid. You can start businesses. You can, you can do whatever you want as a professional other than getting paid from your school, essentially. Um, so that's brand deals, like I said, local or global. So if you have, you know, you're, you could start off working with a local cafe with an idea of like, hey, I want to own a hundred franchises of Starbucks around the globe. And that could be your gateway into that, right? So just understanding the business aspect of this, you can start a business, anything from merchandise to, like I said, you could own franchises if you really want to create nonprofits, sell merchandise. A lot of athletes are selling merchandise and there's platforms that are really good at it. You could also, if you don't know, even know where to start, walk into a local store on campus and say, hey, you know, I'm an athlete. Uh, I want to create this. And here's the value that I can provide you. Do you want to work with me? And they obviously know how to print t-shirts. They know how to get, um, you know, the, the t-shirts in store. They, are, they have the avenue to actually sell them. So you know, if you have nowhere to start, walk into a store and just talk to them. They'll figure it out with you. Hosting camps, seen a lot of these camps over the summer. I think virtual camps is an amazing opportunity, virtual training, anything like that virtually, it's scalable. What I mean by scalable is if you host a camp, one camp, one time in your local neighborhood, you can only have certain amount of athletes or participants. If you do it scalable, a scalable route virtually, you can do it all day, every day, virtually um, across the globe. So you could have hundreds of thousands or millions of people who are paying you to have access to that creating apps, technology, all that type of stuff onto it. And going back to Pat's first point is everything you do is going to be driven through your social media, whether it's a brand deal or starting a business, you're going to promote through social media. So go back to all Pat's slides talking about how to grow on social media and how to utilize it best. And here, here we are. So uh, Pat's IG, TikTok, Twitter, my Twitter IG, uh, basically the same exact thing, change Tim and Pat, swap it out. And, uh, that's it. Awesome. So that's us. I'm going to stop this share. I'll leave it up, I guess, for a second here. That is part one. So again, this, this comes from what we've done. Let me get my video. Come on, video. Where you at, video? There it is. You're not up on me yet. No, I clicked up. There we go. Oh, there you go. It didn't want to go through. But so there's part one. Of where we're at today. Again, that's from our experience of working with pro athletes for a handful of years and now 30 ish college athletes over the last year. So we've seen some really great stuff. We've seen some really bad stuff. Uh, we can guide you, help you ask us questions. Again, we'll be back here. We're going to take a quick <clears throat> about 10 minute break and then we'll